Uh, welcome dear students to my lecture number 54 which I have coined as materials for the construction of farm machinery. Now over uh, the last lectures uh, I have already talked about the various uh, machines and equipment which are being used in agricultural uh, engineering for operation of the various crop production uh, systems. Now, it is very uh, logical and imperative to have uh, some knowledge about the uh, materials which are being used for uh, fabrication of the different components of the machinery. Well, it, it, it must be told over here that uh, uh, you are not a metallurgical engineer, but then as an agricultural engineer you must have an idea about some part of uh, what are the construction materials, what are their behavior, what are their properties and how do they behave and what sort of uh, cautions we must take uh, when we are going to use a particular machine depending upon our requirement, depending upon the um, uh, strength of the material and the depending upon uh, the um, brittleness or hardness or whatever is the um, property that we look for, uh, for a particular operation we must choose the right material. So, for that uh, I have brought this lecture um, for you and we have tried to put it in such a way that a direct reconner of the materials for each of the equipment right from uh, tillage to um, harvesting and threshing, you will get some idea about this. We have taken help of the several literature available uh, elsewhere and the, um, uh, the literature which I had given in my course uh, um, uh, reference books. Uh, but then we have tried to put in a slightly different way which I hope it will interest you. So, let us follow the, uh, the slides uh, which I have brought it for you. Well, uh, let us think of the materials uh, for uh, tillage equipment. Now, we know that the uh, equipment which are used for tillage, uh, moldable plow, disc, um, disc plows, cultivators, uh, sometimes harrows and uh, rotavators, these are the equipment which are used. So, if you um, have a look at the uh, type of materials which are used for say um, in the case of uh, uh, cultivator, see the tines which are made actually the um, shovels which are made which are um, double um, uh, edged shovels which are used in these tines, they are made of high carbon steel and the frame, neutral frame which is there along with the um, three point linkage uh, um, which we have seen in the um, cultivators is made of mild steel. Uh, when you go to the uh, a moldboard plow, well, you know that moldboard plow had different uh, components, and the, uh, the the requirement and the task of different components is vary. So, depending upon the requirement and the uh, the uh, um, task which it has to do, the material of construction uh, um, also varies. Uh, for example, if you see um, the board is made of soft centered steel a lot of scouring will take place. Similarly, the mild, mild steel used for certain portion of the board and then high carbon steel is used for the, uh, for the uh, you can say the um, share which is um, there. Then the other frame, mild steel of course, the frame. Now, if there is a, uh, there is a coulter or a jointer, it will have a similar property as in case of this uh, uh, moldboard plow. Uh, you might have seen that coulters and jointers are also used in this uh, where different purposes and I have already discussed this in uh, the, the earlier lecture which when I was taking the tillage equipment. So, I would not like to uh, repeat, but then I will say that if they are there, they will be also made of the similar material which are uh, mentioned over here. Uh, Let us see what are these uh, steels, we are talking of the various steel and all that, we will uh, take up this and then we will go to some other uh, equipment. Well, uh, you see here that the share which I had shown you, the share uh, is made of uh, certain material which I was told to you. Now, what this steel has for different properties? Well, you know the mild steel and the um, iron from where and from the pig iron, the whole process you might have um, learned at elsewhere in some course. But then from there when the steel is available, this steel has different properties like wear resistance, shock resistance and scouring ability this has. So, on the basis of these properties here of moldboard plow are constructed as I told you earlier that scouring um, uh, ability will be required for this, it should be able to withstand the pressure of uh, the scouring uh, property of the soil which will be there, the soil may be a sandy soil, soil may be a um, uh, loamy soil, 
soil may be hard soil and all that. So, accordingly uh, the mold will plow is design. Neem, okay. Let us see some of the uh, steels, different type of steels and their suitability. For example, crucible steel, uh, area where scouring is not a problem. So, you can use a crucible steel, soft sensor steel, where area where scouring is difficult. Uh, then chilled cast iron, abrasive soil like sand and gravel. So, as I said that there will be a difference. So, material used in farm machines have certain properties like ductility, malleability and plasticity. Yes, these are also important. They need, they are needed at some point or the other and that is why uh, when we talk of this, uh, as an engineer you must keep in mind that uh, the, the proper material uh, choice is uh, one of the important things to be considered. Uh, let us go to sewing equipment. You, uh, we have talked of the sewing equipment earlier um, and uh, more details are known to you. You know about all the components which are there in the uh, equipment which, uh, which starts from a hopper and then goes to the uh, tines and then it goes to the tube, then it has the metering shaft and metering mechanism, then the power transmission etcetera. So, um, if you look at these uh, the different components and their material you can see that mild steel and galvanized sheet fiberglass sometimes are used for the hopper, then the rubber or plastic uh, materials are used for the tubings which are there through which the uh, seed or the fertilizer is transferred from the hopper to the um, soil, um, soil furrow. Uh, sim similarly, the um, materials which are aluminum, brass or castor and some of the steels are used for the, uh, you are talking of the uh, uh, fluted rolls which are made many times now fluted rolls are being made of uh, uh, lighter materials like plastics and all that depending upon the uh, total uh, weight of the machine and the size of the machine have also been used. And of course, uh, these um, the gears which are made here mild steel or cast iron some of these gear materials which have been used or the chains which are used. So, some of the uh, materials which are uh, um, say for example, this uh, boot or the um, where it will open the soil the high carbon steel is the one which is used. Cast iron is used for the um, tubings in which the pipe goes. You, you can see you know, we have been given the details in this figure. And then we will just talk of this material slightly with respect to what metallurgy talks of. And that means, we are talking with respect to the carbon content, which is the uh, important parameter or uh, constituent in uh, giving you the strength of the material. So, if the pig iron is there, it had about 3 to 4 percent of uh, carbon wrought iron has 0 0.02 to 0 0.03 percent carbon, grey cast iron has 0 0.2.5 uh, to 3.8, malleable cast iron has 2.0 to 3.0, then nodular cast iron has 3.2 to 4.2 and white cast iron has 1.8 to 3.6. The, this is the percentage of carbon which is there in all these materials. Mind you that one, the uh, this knowledge is very essential as an agricultural engineer uh, or for that matter this knowledge will help you um, el elsewhere as well when you are if you are not uh, only talking of farm machinery if you are talking of uh, you know, some equipment for food processing or for something else you this knowledge will definitely be uh, helpful to you say interculture next operation which comes uh, in line with the uh, crop production is the interculture equipment so the various equipment uh, we have discussed already are the uh, you can see the uh, uh, here kurpa or the one which is for weeding, this is also another one for um, weeding we utilized. Now, it is uh, handles many a times are wood or plastic, you can see here plastic is used here, but the blades which are there or the tines or the ones which will actually work with the um, grasses or the weeds um, in mild steel with 0 0.15 to 0 0.25 percent carbon. Similarly, the um, uh, kurpa or, or this device which is there for uh, manual operation, you can see here that the carbon steel or alloy steels are there because it has to have some sort of sharpness at the edges. These edges should be having certain sharpness and therefore, 0 0.5 to 0 0.8 percent carbon or varying from 0 0.5 to 0.9 percent manganese and 0 0.5 percent of sulphur and 0.5 percent of phosphorus. Now, this is the carbon steel or alloy steels uh, comprise of these. When you talk of uh, a, um, uh, the wheel hoe or the one which is a push and pull type of feeders, uh, for them you see the uh, either wood or mild steel is the pipes which are used for handles, uh, the handles which are there or the frame which we are talking of here. 
So, you can talking of this uh, or you are talking of this, then you, you mean then mild steel, the, the wheel, generally this wheel must be cast iron, it does not have, well it needs some sort of weight uh, will require for uh, giving the momentum, for forward momentum while we are doing uh, push and pull. So, uh, the cast iron or mild steel will help us in having this material. Now, here when we are talking of this, let us have some application as well because we have not talked more details about the nuts and bolts and all that. So, some of the better details of the steel are given here as per the requirement. For example, so types low carbon steel and mild steel with carbon percentage less than 0.25. The has application in nuts, bolts and other simple components of agricultural implements. Then uh, shafts, gears and axles, uh, well the, these are made of carbon with 0 0.5 to uh, 0 0.6 where the medium carbon steel is used and high carbon steel where 0 0.6 to 1.5 where the plow share, the blades, disc, uh, discs, the uh, disc of the plow, then shovels, disc coulters and cutting tools. So, this information which has been put uh, here uh, for you to have a look at it will be a ready recorder for you to understand uh, the details about the materials. Well, plant protection equipment you uh, we have already discussed about this plant protection equipment as well and uh, the first uh, component of this is the, uh, is the container or the um, drum in which we have to have uh, the, the material which is there in liquid form or the, um, uh, the solution which has been prepared has to be kept. Now, this is generally made of fiber glass, reinforced plastic, brass, galvanized iron. So, depending upon uh, what is the uh, type, you can see that uh, this is made of uh, uh, the material which you want, particularly depending upon what type of uh, the chemical is. Because if it is one which will corrode faster and all that, then you will have to take care of uh, the uh, proper either plastics or uh, maybe a brass which will not react with that. Similarly, the booms, you can see here the booms which are made, uh, mild steel and galvanized iron, the booms are made of and uh, the nozzles, you can see the nozzles which are uh, talked of here, nozzles which are there at several locations, uh, the different locations over here. So, these nozzles are made of uh, brass or tungsten carbide, so um, because they have certain properties required. Now, these uh, uh, when we are talking of these materials in the components, certain other things are also required. For example, you we must have some idea about what is the level of strengthening which is given to the materials, which we call as heat treatment of the um, uh, particular uh, constituent or the steel which is there. So, the properties of heat um, of um, steel may be modified processing of by processing of heating and cooling called heat treatment. So, heat treatment is uh, a process by which we are in a position to modify uh, certain uh, properties of this. Out of these very, the ones which are very much common, uh, which are used in our uh, equipment particularly with respect to farm machines, we can say that the hardening, uh, annealing, tempering and case hardening uh, are most commonly used. And we will just talk of the uh, dif different structural forms of this. So, allotropes are different forms of the same element and how and uh, how they exhibit different properties. So, we have just jotted down here for your uh, uh, ready understanding. You can see that the changes which are taking place in the iron, uh, the temperature are uh, changing. So, as the temperature, as it cools down, you can see that the, uh, the different changes in the structure of this material, you, these are the different structures which are, which are talked of. So, you can see that the molten iron at a temperature of up to 1539 to 1600 Celsius, delta iron which is 1400 to this, then gamma iron which is FCC is 910 to 1400 degrees Celsius and as you come down you can see that uh, the material has a different property. Uh, well, this has been brought down in concise form for you to um, have this knowledge as a base. If you, you, know, you are interested to know more about these, I think it will be better for you to consult uh, the books, relevant books of metallurgy and go into some more details provided you are encountered with a problem which is required for, uh, for more consideration with respect to the materials which you want to use. Suppose you want to use a material which is uh, high in strength and lighter, then you will have to accordingly choose the materials.
methods of heat treatment. Well, we talked of the different methods of uh, heat treatment which we had here. Now, what hardening is? It's uh, the hardening is a process, and cool certainly is a process where the material metal is heated uh, to a temperature of 1094 is the value which is given over here. 1094 and is cooled suddenly uh, by quenching in oil uh, or water. So, these are the process which is there and uh, once you your experience you will understand what is the level of hardness which is required for a particular uh, component in a in a in a equipment. Similarly, annealing the metal is heated to a temperature of uh, 840 to about 955 degrees centigrade and allowed to remain uh, remain at the maximum temperature for one to several hours according to the size of the metal then allowed to cool slowly. Now, this is another process because accordingly the structure we talked of the BCC, FCC those structures of the material made, uh, changes and the moment uh, you follow the, this process of uh, heat treatment it will have one property which will help you. Similarly, tempering this tempering is the temperature is 500 degree and uh, about 500 degree and cooled by quenching in liquid uh, with uh, any liquid you can do. So, tempering is uh, one property which is required. case hardening. Now, this process of case hardening is addition of carbon into outer cell of the steel. Now, what do we mean by outer cell of the steel? If you go to the structure of the steel, you will understand uh, which of course, requires knowledge of more metallurgy into that, but then you will understand there that uh, the carbon additional carbon is added for case hardening, which is required for some of the, the components which I have talked of them earlier. Well, uh, the details are given here about all of these and uh, the, the changes in the property etcetera and its strength etcetera are given over here for you to uh, have a note of uh, these. Well, harvesting and threshing equipment, um, we have talked of this equipment uh, already and we know the various uh, components of uh, these equipment. See the mild steel, uh, no, uh, I have uh, given you here some of the equipment which uh, we have and uh, we would like to you to have a note of this. That is why it is worth understanding that uh, instead of telling you that this is made of this and that, we have the equipment here and we wish, uh, wish that you take a note of these. For example, see for medium carbon steel is used for the gear which is shown over here when power transmission takes place in case of a thresher and mild steel is for this cover and then the covers etcetera or the frame etcetera which are used. Uh, you can see that mild steel is spring steel sometimes of the actually when we are talking of these uh, uh, actually the uh, on the bar actually if it is a thre paddy thresher then the, the hooks which are required. So, they reduce uh, threshing elements. So, the threshing elements uh, which are here they require that they should be stronger here. So, spring steel uh, wires are used on that. So, because they have to have uh, different strength and enough strength for uh, as a threshing element. So, we need that they should be made of these materials. Now, when you go to the harvesting see most important is the knife guard. Uh, which which is over here and then the casting uh, iron casting steel casting steel forging now these are the different types of uh, materials which are used for these sometimes the the one, these ones which are the uh, which will try to put the material or the uh, cut crop uh, but this is a vertical conveyor reaper so the cut crop will be transported for that these are the uh, you can say that these are some of these uh, plastic uh, uh, materials which are used for sprockets which will allow them to go like this. Then the uh, material for uh, uh, the or uh, you can have even aluminum materials are also used depending upon this uh, depending upon the performance and the uh, the type of this particular equipment some manufacturers have used uh, even aluminum uh, acrylic materials or aluminum or plastic that we are calling of here. Then the uh, the the actually shear plate and the ledger plate and the shear cutting shear uh, blade. So, you can see that these are um, these require a um, different material here you require a high carbon steel here because this has to cut and he has to have a longer life. So, this is made of uh, this material where uh, 0 0.7 to 0 0.95 percent carbon and 0 0.3 to 0.5 percent manganese is required in this.
well we are not talking of the other components which are there of the engine or we are not talking of the rubber of the uh, tire etc but we are talking of only of this part of it where the uh, if the power transmission is also there gear etc because we have talked of the gear etc here so we are just talking of those elements which are uh, essential with regard to the uh, we are not uh, yes we are not talking of the engines uh, other uh, transporting materials like uh, tail wheel or the transport wheel etc. Uh, but we are talking of this. So, as such for the harvesting and threshing equipment we find that uh, these are the um, components and these are the materials. There could be different uh, requirements also for the um, thresher depending upon what type of thresher you have uh, whether you are talking of a full flow thresher where the full um, uh, paddy, uh, uh, paddy plant itself is given there could be different if you are talking of a wheat thresher you will require a different type of uh, heating element I mean the uh, threshing elements etc. So, keeping these in mind I think a, an idea is given to you about uh, these uh, equipment materials. Application of ferrous materials well um, we know that uh, iron is, is the major uh, content in this. Now, here we will say that what is the ferrous materials which are used. Now, a list is given over here and their corresponding applications are given. Now, you can see that we have talked of this, but then some more details which will help you in understanding these materials say like grey cast iron, white cast iron, ductile cast iron, cast iron, mild steel and steel and their respective applications which are given over here in a nutshell which will help you in understanding these and then help you in picking up the materials, choosing the materials while construction or designing when you are thinking of depending upon the requirement of the equipment. Uh, application of non-ferrous materials, yes these are also required uh, um, as you talk of the uh, ferrous base materials and non-ferrous base materials here the copper, aluminum, brass, bronze wood, plastic and rubber. These are also used in equipment which uh, we know and it is since we did not give every detail of every component in as I said in case of thresher and all that. So, you can here say for example, rubber, tires, tubes, belts, then insulation wires, rubbing, uh, rubber bushings etcetera. These are the ones which are used uh, from rubber. Uh, see the wood, yes, bullock cart, uh, the bullock cart or the uh, simple can say that uh, more a simple plow uh, which is driven by animal has uh, the beam which is used for uh, the, the using wood, uh, wooden, spank, uh, wooden spanks or wooden planks are used sometimes which are uh, used for uh, smothering the uh, or uh, planing you can say that uh, for uh, planking which is the operation for uh, after the, uh, the equipment has been operated we would like to level the land. So, for that you can use uh, wood. Then uh, uh, copper, aluminum, brass etcetera we more details are given about where they are used and all that. So, it is worth having some information about the uh, ferrous materials, non-ferrous materials, uh, the heat treatments which are utilized and what is the level of carbon which is uh, there and which carbon helps you in what sort of property etcetera it is worth uh, um, knowing and then worth having this information. Now, so we wanted to uh, wanted to give you uh, since uh, we have talked of the materials it is worth and very logical and uh, very imperative that we also talk um, about the stress stress behavior of the ferrous and non ferrous materials. Now, in case of mild steel which is the one which is very widely used in all the equipment that we have talked of so far. So, we see here uh, it is a graph which is you might have seen in various strength of material books and all that and uh, we wanted that it should be presented to you in this uh, lecture. So, that you have this information uh, ready made at your location and you follow this up. Remember always that when we are talking of this we are talking of with respect to only the uh, equipment which are used and which we have discussed so far in my lectures right from the beginning to up to this. Uh, but then uh, if you want to have more information and you should have more information depending upon your requirement you can uh, go to metallurgy uh, books any book on metallurgy and with that will give you 
uh, certain more information about, for example, about the structure, we BCC, FCC, what are these and how these structures change. If you go into the chemistry of and uh, bonding of these uh, elements, you will have more information. Now, you can see here that we have just talked of the my stress strain curve and you know that to which uh, up to this uh, point A, which is the limit of proportionality. So, you know that uh, stress varies strain in up to this. Then between A and B, the is the um, elastic limit up to of the material. Then from C, from B to C, we are talking of the yield point. You must have heard uh, that uh, the yield point of a material is this much. So, what is this yield point? So, this is the yield point which is given over here. You can see this is the point which are which is the yield point. Then partially plastic, you can go to the D ultimate strength. This talks of the ultimate strength here and E breaking point or fracture point at this point. So, this is for uh, mild steel, this is the uh, this is the behavior of uh, the material when you talk of strain and various strain. Now, when you go to uh, non-ferrous and ferrous materials over here, there is some change which is required for the um, this curve uh, which is varying here. You can have a look at this say alloy steel or tool steels, you can see that this is the um, this is the curve here. When you go to high carbon, you can see what behavior it, it is having. Then medium carbon steel, where is the change? Then when you go to mild steel, uh, ductile, ductility is the requirement, you could see this. Similarly, wrought iron, cast iron. So, the behavior um, which has been shown over here for the ferrous materials. When you go to non-ferrous materials, when you are talking of aluminum, uh, brass or any copper and things like that, you see the behavior of these materials. And for these, the total properties are already given to you and uh, you can use from the tables which are available and then worth uh, having for uh, this information. Well, uh, elastic um, and um, ultimate strength of some common materials, we thought it is worth to give you. We talked of the uh, proportionality, we talked of the stress strain curve in ferrous and non-ferrous materials, we talked of the behavior and we just want to give you what are the different uh, ultimate strength and elastic strength of the materials which we had here. For example, cast iron, malleable iron, wrought iron, chrome, steel, um, uh, bronze, aluminum, casting and timbers and all the tensile, in tension and compression what is the ultimate strength, in uh, elastic strength what is the uh, tension and compression. So, these are all given over here. It will help you definitely when you want to design a particular component while thinking of any operation of the equipment. So, so far uh, I can tell you that in this particular lecture we wanted to uh, we wanted to give you some idea about the materials and their construction and their behavior and the properties of these materials which help you in choosing the material from a galaxy of the materials available for different components uh, when you are designing an equipment. I hope uh, I have answered quite uh, good questions, but then there could be quite uh, good questions which may also follow and we will be happy to answer them in future as they come. Uh, I hope uh, we will be in a position to uh, answer them. So, I think thank you very much for this.